So welcome to the session. We had taken this assignment yesterday. I'll read it out and then we can reflect upon this. Reflect on all units, material and consciousness being submerged in space and how all the units of every order except those of the self in the human order have definite conduct. Reflect on your role in the existence, working on transformation within by referring to the natural acceptance and with that living in coexistence with definiteness. Are we making effort for this? And we had to note our observations. So yesterday we talked about coexistence in existence. We took a look at the harmony in the entire existence and we can see that existence in nature submerged in space. Space is all pervading, unlimited. While units are limited in size, space is no activity. While the units are activity and active with other units. And being submerged in space, every unit is self organized, every unit is energized, and recognizing the relationship and fulfilling it. Space is transparent, self organization is available in space. And energy in equilibrium is available in space. Now, this is something that is coming to us as a proposal, and we may take time to observe all this. Presently, we can start by observing our relationship with the units, we can start by observing the harmony in the units. But the more we are able to explore this, we are able to also see the basis for all this the basis for relationship, the basis for harmony. And we are able to see that it is ultimately submergence by virtue of which every unit is self-organized, every unit is energized, every unit is fulfilling the relationship. And with that, realization gets awakened in me and the right understanding gets complete in me. Now that is the desired state in the self. That is the state of the self which is fully developed and we need to work for it. We can also see that human being is coexistence of self and body and ultimately it is the awakening of the self that is the purpose of utilizing the body as an instrument. So the body is an instrument, self is central to human existence and essentially awakening of the self is the purpose of all that we are doing. And the awakening gets complete with realization of coexistence. So here again, one important task is to be clear about the proposal. So we had this slide in front of us yesterday and we discussed all that is written here on the slide. But if you have any question regarding the words being used or <clears throat> the inferences being made, then you can raise your hand and ask questions. So please have a look at the slide and try to make out if everything that is written on the slide is clear to you. So as we have been saying that for self-exploration, first of all, the proposal has to be clear. So are we able to get the proposal as it is being proposed, which is one important thing. Second thing, to verify within at the level of natural acceptance. So we can look at every bit and piece of the proposal and try to reflect within whether it is acceptable to me naturally or not. And then we can validate in living. We can validate in our behavior, work, and participation. And you will see that on one hand, while we are working for realization of existence, on the other hand, we get more and more preparedness for participating in the larger order, commitment for participating in the larger order, and the two complement each other. Unless I start working for undivided society, my contemplation of relationship cannot be complete. Unless I start participating for universal human order by understanding of harmony in the nature cannot be complete. And unless I'm able to see my role in the entire existence or I start working for it, for fulfilling my role in the entire existence, I get committed for it. The realization is not complete or it's not awakened. So I have to work 
on both ends on one hand i have to keep working for realization and on the other hand i have to keep working for universal human order and human tradition yeah so this is what we had proposed yesterday i'll not go through the content once again we had discussed it yesterday if you have any question you may raise your hand good morning i have a query that in bio order uh you uh, you you are given the slides in which cell plant animal body and then human body so uh it is it means the human is he is in bio order a part of human bio body order. human body human body yeah so human, human body, body is a unit of bio order so i see uh, 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 then cell develop to the plant plant develop to animal body and animal to human body but human consciousness here we 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 have not shown anything relate, related to the consciousness so consciousness may be animal a little part or human a better part but then the animal instinct is our basic nature that is my question and how uh, we can get rid of this cell plant and animal uh, back of of human body thank you bhaiya because okay, all, is, all is in me yeah let me just clarify that yeah. it's not basically development it is organization so the cells with one kind of organization make a plant cells with another kind of organization make a animal body and cells is still another kind of organization make the human body so it is only composition and decomposition by virtue of which different kinds of uh organized units are there in the nature and when we look at the human body then we see that it is a unit of the bio order and when it coexists with the self the consciousness then it makes the human order so the consciousness is already there the self now whether the consciousness that is the self is awakened or not is the core issue so as we keep on exploring within as we keep on verifying and validating the proposals then we start getting developed and as we get developed we get rid of animal consciousness and we are able to transform to human consciousness so it's yeah. not the yeah one query when cell get developed it becomes plant when plant... i'm not saying that Achha, it's see. not that cell gets developed cells organize in a particular manner to make a plant so if you look at the smallest uh organization of the cell so for example when you say algae yeah. or bacteria or these kinds of cells so they are existing as individual cells or a collection of few cells but when they make a plant then there is a different kind of structure there tissues are there and the systems are there when they are in the animal body still a different kind of organization is there more sophisticated structures are there the body parts are there and when you look at the human body still more sophisticated structure is there the brain is there which is fully developed which is not there with the animals so it's not that the cells are developing the cells are organizing so i am using the word development only when it comes to consciousness for the material units we can use the word organization or structure bhaiya oh, i i have a query that when animal body is in bio order human body is in bio order that what is in animal order and what is in human order yeah so basically when the two are coexisting then they make the order so if you look at ourselves we are living as a human being we are not living either as self or body so in the nature self is there and body is there as a living unit so long as it is coexisting with the self so we wanted to demarcate that the body is not a unit of consciousness the body is a unit of bio order so it is a bio unit but when it is coexisting with the self it makes the human order it is just for clarification 
but so that we but, are able to see that the body is material but animal has no self so how they come to the animal order animal has self i see yes yes animal has self plants do not have self Thank you. So now you have one issue to explore is when we look at the units in the nature, how can we make out which unit has self and which hasn't? So this is something which is doable and it clarifies so many things. So by looking at the conduct of a unit, we can make out whether it is there in the bio order or in the animal order or human order. And we can also look at the organization of the body. For example, if a unit of bio order does not have a brain, fully developed brain, so that it can coexist with the self, then the self will not be there in that unit, with that unit. So we can see yes. that plants do not have brain. Sorry for it's asking it's... you again and again. Then human body plus self is human order. Yes, yes. That is what and is mentioned there. G. Animal body plus self is animal order. Yes. Thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you. And Clear. plants do not have self. Similarly, we can look at organisms, various organisms in the nature, insects, you know, uh, reptiles and all those things. And then we can try to make out whether it has self or not. Then we can make out whether it belongs to the bio order or animal order. Right, Bhaiya. Thank you, Bhaiya. Priyadarshini ji has a question. Unit is activity and unit is energized. So can we differentiate between activity and energy? So no need to actually differentiate between the two. We can say that activity is energy. And a better word could be activity is relative energy. Space that is no activity is energy in equilibrium. So relative energy means which can go up or down, which can increase or decrease. So if you look at the energy in our body, it can increase or decrease. If you look at the energy in the cell, it can increase or, or decrease. But when we look at the space, it is no activity and it is energy in equilibrium. So it is always there at the base of the units being energized, but there is no increment or decrement there. So it's self-organized and uh, units of nature is self-organized and in case of space, self-organization is available. Yes. So that one, uh, Daya, can you please say? Equilibrium means it remains as it is. There is no increase or decrease. So the very being of a unit is also energy. So being in space, every unit is existing. How come? What is there at the base? So the space is there at the base. So every unit is there and then it is active with other units. So that also has to be understood. That also has to be recognized. So there is energy in equilibrium which is at the base of every unit which is energized being in space. So many times what we are accustomed to observe is the change. So, for example, a plant is growing. So, we say that there is activity here or there is energy here. If a plant remains as it is, then we are not able to make out whether it has energy or not. The building is there. It has been there. It is going to be there for some more years. So, the building also has energy. The building is there, very much there. So, what is there at the base of this? How come the building is there as an energized unit? What is there at the base? So, that is space. That's how we call it energy in equilibrium. That is, it is something which is never changing. It is there just as it is. And sir, uh, and Bhaya, units in nature is self-organized. Yeah, nature is self-organized, being in space. So self-organized, uh... It is um, so unable to make out. Yeah, self-organized means every unit has a definite conduct. 
so if you look at the body your body has a different conduct it is self organized <clears throat> all the parts of the body are acting you know, in a such a cohesive manner harmoniously we have we have so many systems in the body so many organs so many tissues bones you know, and they are working in such a cohesive manner the body is self organized if i look at the plants the birds the animals you know, every unit we can see that they are self organized now when it comes to the self of the human being it is also self organized in a sense that the moment i have any thought or feeling which is not in line with relationship harmony or coexistence i feel unhappy this is how we are also self organized but yes since the knowing is not ensured happiness is not ensured so while we are self organized being in space we have to realize this coexistence so that we are there as a happy unit in continuity we are happy you know in continuity that is something doable so all the units uh, are submerged in space so they are self organized and yeah, the space is also self organized no we say that or we are able to see that space is at the base of every unit being self organized so we can say that self organization is available so just try to see and you can appreciate this how this body is working in such a self organized manner how your house is working in a self organized manner how the furniture the plants the animals the insects all these are working in a self organized manner how come what is there at the base so at the base is submergence the space okay okay bhai i got it thank you nice didi so reflect upon this try to have the clarity and i suggest that we can make it a point that we try to describe all that is written on the slide in our or in our words we can say or just as it is we try to describe it and note it down on a you know journal try to explain all this that is written here by yourself okay and then try to look into the reality when you go to write it explain and elaborate upon it then you have much more clarity because when you select words to express you have to be very particular whether this way or that way so that will help you particularly those of us who are preparing to take workshops need to do do this when you try to write it down explain all the things that are written here then you have maybe some more questions to explore and when you try to look into the difference of the meaning of the two words the usage of the words then your expression also becomes more definite i uh, hear if i have put a 100 rupees in front of animal for example monkey uh, one banana for example monkey focus on banana only not 100 rupees here in this way there is no brain activity in the animal consciousness but in you which we face to face move you have already told you close your eyes and to do that activity you can inform to go to animal consciousness actually we are as a human being you have inform to go to animal consciousness that is my question is in case of peaceful needs in that stage only is it correct uh, say it again uh, for example if banana is there and 100 rupees is there monkey focus on only banana monkey don't think 100 rupees got lot of bananas here my question is you can say close your eyes and sometimes and think imagination will come in that stage we are thinking lot of things the confusion will come here my question is animal consciousness we are peaceful is it correct no not exactly see few things to observe here so 
the way it happens with a monkey, it can happen with a child also. So if you give a child one banana or a hundred rupee note, the child may prefer a banana, not a note. Isn't it? Yes. Second thing, we have the potential to know. And unless that knowing is ensured, we are not happy in continuity. Now, if you have the potential to know and if you try to live like an animal, it is not acceptable naturally to you. So, for example, you may give banana to a monkey and then laugh at the monkey. But monkey has no issues, no problems as such. But if somebody gives you something to eat and laughs at you, you may feel hurt and uh, against your dignity. And then you may plan to you know, be self-reliant so that nobody can laugh at you when you are going to fulfill your needs. So we have that natural acceptance for respect in us. The same thing doesn't apply to an animal. Isn't it? So it's not that we can live like an animal and be happy. No. An animal living with animal consciousness is fine. A human living with human consciousness is fine. But when a human being tries to live like an animal, then it is not fine. It is not acceptable to us naturally. You got me? Okay. Uh, I can understand. But each word I can uh, translate in my mother tongue, regional languages and uh, for examples only I get the clarity. For example, words are there. I am focused on each word and translate in my language, local, regional language. Then based on the examples, I can understand. That's a process I have done in this, uh, my imagination process. You can take examples, but ultimately you have to look into the meaning as a pure observer. Because examples will have their limitation. Whenever you try to take an example, it has limitation. That's how we are able to see that when you are trying to understand the activities of block B1, there are no examples to be given. You have to observe as it is. But when you are trying to look at the form or property, then you can take examples because there is variety. Yes, through some illustration or you can also call it example, we can try to exhibit how contemplation expresses in conduct, how understanding expresses in conduct. That is something that we can share. But Ultimately, it is again coupled with your imagination. So it's better to see the reality as it is. Examples are just facilitation for us to indicate the reality. But ultimately, you have to see the reality. Indication will not work. Indication is just a help. Here I have one doubt. For translation, space activity and dynamic activity, I have some confusion is there. Dynamic activity is movable. Space activity is stable. Is it correct? Dynamic Space. activity is movable and this is stable. Uh -huh. No, we are not saying that. See, state activity is something that gets established in you. And dynamic activity is the decision that takes place in you based on that. Now, when it is block B1, then that decision is natural. And it is block B2, it may be conditioned. Now, when something is established as a state activity in block B1, it continues. When, when something gets established in block B2, it may not continue. It may change from time to time. So, stability, if you see, it's not there in block B2. Stability, it means which can continue, is there in block B1 only. Okay, based yeah. on morning, uh, morning section, I have learned a lot of things. So it will take time to understand 100%. Thank nice, you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically, whatever things we are putting in the bio order, like plant and all, uh, we are putting them in non living category. So uh, like in science, we define living things that are having growth, respiration, uh, in that way. So, uh, will it be okay to say that living thing 
having a desire to live means with continuity of happiness and prosperity is one thing and living thing without having any means possibility of imagination or knowing that is a separate thing can we say like that or uh, means <laughs> When yeah, we say yeah. like by order non living, it somewhere contradicts with the you know, current uh, existing science and all. So, what what should we do with that? Yes, so here we have to understand what is life. How do we define life? If life is equated to growth or respiration, then plants can be said to have life. But if life is equated to coexistence of self and body, then plants do not have life. So if something doesn't have life, so it is non-living. If something has life, it is living. So basically we have to define life here. If growth and decay yeah, yeah. are related to life, then it has a different meaning. But if coexistence of self and body is related to life, then it has a different meaning. Yeah, in a basically lower classes uh, like my daughter is studying in class three so uh, in our book when we are trying to uh, you know, intimate them what is life like <laughs> these things are categorically written like uh, you know respiration growth reproduction and movement all these activities then they are leaving me <laughs> so <laughs> it, uh, it will be difficult to you know help them in that way, yeah. okay. Thank you. Yes, Bhaiya. And in fact, you can see that since childhood, our students are or our children are not able to explore the reality because the understanding of self is not there. And as soon as it comes to understanding the self, then they feel that this is something spiritual and it cannot be a part of the curriculum and it becomes a mystery. So the children are not able to understand what life is and that's how they are also not able to understand and that's how we are also not able to understand how to decide our program of life. So you can, if you talk to the students, they do not have clarity about what can be called, called as veg, what can be called as non-veg, what can be called as plant, what can be called as animal what can be called as life. So all these things are not clear because the understanding of self is not there. So that is an issue. In fact, these are basic issues which we have to settle in the long run. People do not have understanding of happiness, do not have understanding of prosperity, do not have understanding of self. And that's how the whole curriculum is designed. So people are suffering because the basic aspiration is not getting fulfilled but they do not have clarity also to go ahead. And when it comes to deciding such issues, they do not have anything which can be called as universal. Then they have to go by various texts or opinions or traditions and they are caught up. So on one hand, we are working to develop ourselves so that we are able to live a happy and prosperous life. On the other hand, we have a very sincere task to be accomplished because we have to transform the whole education there's a need for that we have to transform the whole culture the way people think so that is another important thing to do that will happen gradually <clears throat> when more and more people are exploring and coming to the state of contemplation understanding and realization then this will be again become a common opinion. For example, people have the opinion that human being is not merely the body. This is something common. But they do not have a common opinion about what the other thing is if the body is not just human being. So they have various words to use, but they are not clear about the reality. I have a small doubt, sir. Yesterday I was teaching to my students uh, what a poem, the brook. Uh, it uh, tells the students that life is like a brook or a stream uh, which continues its journey in spite of ups and downs, curves and uh, turns and ups and, and uh, down falling deep valleys. 
uh, it continues its journey till it merges in the river. Then one, course, one student asked me, is our life also like this? And I told them, life is different from this brook, but you have to bear certain <laughs> keeping the values in your mind and making your life happy and making others also happy in spite of so many problems that you face in the future. I told them, I to convince them, sir, I feel that he is not satisfied. <laughs> so for that, first of all, we have to understand life. Yes, sir. Yes. What life is. Yes. Sir. Then otherwise, we may have uh, various paradoxes to share. We may have you know, uh, various idioms and phrases to relate to life, but that will not work. Yes, so sir. We yes. want a life of happiness and prosperity in continuity. Yes, sir. sir. It's not that it is full of ups and downs. It's only that unless I see the reality, yes, I'm not sir. in harmony. Yeah, and harmony yeah. happiness. The moment I'm able to see the reality, I'm happy. Ah, I brought it to their mind uh, with the basic aspirations, what to do, how to do also. Mm -hmm. And some students almost they satisfied with my explanation about life, the body and instrument, keeping it continuous happiness and harmony. Yes, sir. Some students yeah. are really they are very interested to listen to our uh, content, sir. <laughs> yes. So only that we do not have to say all these things as an information. We yes, have sir. to let them explore by themselves. We can just propose to them and yes. then help them explore. Yes. That will work better. Yes, sir. I told them, sir, to think about it, to have a deep exploration also, to understand first what is life. And then they felt very happy, sir. I do feel very happy to listen and to pass it on to my students. So what you say and others say. Gee, nice, nice, Bia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Bye, bye. Have a bye. nice day. Ha, ah, but we are continuing the discussion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember well uh, our uh, short stay in a serum, sir. Pardon. I remember well, sir, we stayed a short period in SRM University, sir, Chennai. Ah, okay, 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> you are at SRM? Yes, sir, yes, oh, sir. Nice, nice, sir. So nice thank to be together you. again. Yes. Right, right, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have put a question in the chat. Like, we are saying that plants don't have cells because they don't have brain-like structure. And... Brain is a part of body that is material unit. So this implies that for determining existence of cell, we are taking help of a uh, nature of a structure of material unit that is brain. Is it? I mean. So that is one way to conclude. But ultimately we have to see the reality as it is. So we can have different uh, approaches. One is that I can look into the activity of assuming whether the unit exhibits assuming or not. Hmm. So that is something that I can observe in the conduct. Yes. Second thing, when I dissect the body, I can see whether there is some structure in the body which can coexist with the cell. If not, then how come the cell can exist with this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are many ways. I mean, this is one of the approach. Uh, the brain existence of brain is one we of the approach. Look at the reality. So we are trying mm -hmm. to hint at the reality, and we are also trying to analyze. We are trying to use some logic also there to be able yeah. to uh, get closer to that observation. But ultimately, at some point of time, you have to directly observe it. In fact, when you are able to directly observe yourself in coalition with the body, then the rest starts following. Yes. Because then we are able to minutely observe how you coexist with the body. And you can simply make out that this is not possible with something which is not having this part in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that is, uh, that is easier for us to do in ourselves. That is human uh, existence. Um, yeah, and you can also try to coexist with the plant. Try to do this, see if it is successful. <laughs> that is also yeah. a possibility. <laughs> yes, okay.
ओके भैया नाइस भैया स्मॉल क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दिस नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस एज वी आर डिस्कसिंग ए चाइल्ड डू नॉट हैव राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस नो इफ आई एम नॉट मिस्टेकन सो बिलो 5 इयर्स नॉर्मली आर इन्फेंट्स दे आर हैविंग दिस रिकॉग्निशन एंड फुलफिलिंग but they may not be having knowing and assuming bhaiya but they may be having assuming is always there see the yeah. self is there so assuming is there okay okay means in infants also <laughs> see this is something basic that we have been discussing yes. self means assuming recognizing and fulfilling is there okay okay so a self cannot be there without assuming and i will also say that knowing may also be there to some extent it's only that since the body is not fully developed fully grown up Gee. so the knowing may not be get expressed completely so the child may not use the language to express the knowing that he or she has that is also possible for example if you are able to accomplish knowing to some extent right and Gee. now when you are there with a body of a child right then Gee. you are having that knowing even though you are not able to express knowing yes and that is the reason uh, it takes our picks only banana and not the money this prosperity or something like that he no, 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 only <laughs> that is a different thing see even that is a kind of assuming mm -hmm. so for example you can train a monkey also to go for a 100 rupee note and not a banana for example you give the monkey a banana and stop giving but mm -hmm. if he holds the 100 rupee note then you give him 100 bananas then mm -hmm. the monkey can also get conditioned to go for 100 rupee note and not a banana because now he can make out the difference between the two conduct if he goes for a banana he has only one if he goes for a rupee he has 100 bananas now within the self of the monkey also that analysis is going on and by virtue of that it can make out which way to go ji ji thank you bhaiya this is how we yeah. train animals in a circus isn't it जी हाँ anger comes in just uh, like that so we in that state even if i try uh, to be on a state of uh, observance somehow something gets missing like uh, first you of all i would say that uh, there is uh, something missing in, in in terms of like i think i am not that much observant maybe so uh, i'm not able to see that and uh, also like before also i'm not uh, that much observant but yeah the feeling of uh, relationship with other human beings are there always but sometimes it, it so happens that uh, with the person with whom you are in opposition like one or two maybe maybe there is not much but sometimes it, it so happens that the, uh, so what at, the, at that time somebody that person comes and uh, uh, uh say something to you then you automatically becomes uh, in a uh, uh, like um, up, opposite up, opposite to that person even if you don't want that to happen no so what is the question so where in that state even if i want to be in a state of observe uh, like pure observer i'm not able to uh, like put myself there how to come in? uh to that level yeah so i can work for it proactively so i can see that such situations are always possible you know the basic issue is that i am not able to see my intention and intention of the other and since i am not able to see the intention rightly so my desire is also not in line with my intention so i'll try to look at it proactively so like we are attending this morning session i can start looking within because the person may come in front of me for few seconds but 
i can always see that the person is there and it may be there in my imagination yeah I, in my imagination i can evaluate whether i am having the feeling of opposition or relationship for this person whether i want to make this person happy or unhappy the basic yeah. issue is that we are not able to decide for ourselves whether i want to make this person happy or unhappy and from there the whole contradiction emerges because i am not clear about my basic intention basic aspiration to make the other happy or unhappy it is not clear to us and then we try to look into this maybe, then maybe we will yeah. have a jumble of yeah a jumble of thoughts how the other person has harmed you how the other person has uh misbehave with you so many things may come to you and then those uh, thoughts overpower your observation and you will get lost in your thoughts so the basic thing to do is here to look into your intention whether you want to make other happy or not be clear about that the moment it is clear this will be taken care of if i want to make other ha person happy how can i desire to make him or her unhappy how can i think of something otherwise it is not possible so long as you are able to see that you want to make the other person happy you will have your desire thought and expectation in line with that so happen that you observe it for some time and then you get lost to your thoughts and then again you get drifted away because the intention part is not being observed again that is how it works uh, so so bhaiya in that case uh, how do we uh... uh like if your colleague uh, with your colleague some opposition has happened in the past and then it is carried along so how to uh, get away with it like of course i need to work upon myself but if you have a working relationship and you want a working relationship with others so how to uh, do it within yourself by self exploration and in the relationship by having a dialogue Uh, so how how to have a dialogue that you have to decide the mechanism you have to decide so essentially that mutual co exploration is required that you are able to explore together the issue is not of defending oneself or blaming oneself the issue is exploring the reality together so in any relationship ultimately there is mutual happiness when we become co explorers of the reality so in place of talking about events or incidences we have to talk about the intention we have to talk about the potential to live happily together the potential to know that has to come to the focus and not the incidences because they are you cannot exactly make out what has happened thing has gone by and it is no longer there and you may have one version the other person may have another version and we just keep on struggling with the issue so the thing that is doable in our mutual you know dialogue is to raise the basic issues our intention our potential to know our complementarity relationship harmony coexistence this is something to be discussed and we will see that if you are able to pay attention yeah, then you... only you are able to accept you know your mistakes also otherwise you may you may keep on defending this is what is generally happening in conversations people are not having dialogue and that's how they start the conversation and it turns into a debate or an argument move to the next slide so having discussed harmony in the existence now we can see our program our program is to transform transform from animal consciousness to human consciousness so we discussed about these two diagrams and we can see that essentially at the core is self transformation the transformation in the self and when i am able to transform myself then i am also able to be a part of uh, transforming the society so presently maybe here something that is written on the bottom on the left hand side so within me i am not clear i am confused my higher level activities are not awakened and that's how i am promoting a new human society but the moment i start exploring within i start getting awakened within 
I have clarity of relationship, I have clarity of harmony, coexistence, and then all my activities are guided by right understanding. Now with that, when I participate in the society, I work towards fulfillment of human goal. And when I do that, I'm able to relate to people, I'm able to discuss the proposals, I'm able to help them explore the reality. And the society starts marching towards a humane society. And we can see this very much. One person, one faculty in a institution attends a workshop. And gradually, so many faculty from the institution start attending the workshop. And the institution starts transforming. The faculty as a team start working towards transformation. And then the students also start working for the transformation. Isn't it? And then the institution becomes a role model for a cluster of institutions. And this is how it proceeds. So human education is at the core, which enables the personal transformation by virtue of which we are able to enable societal transformation. And this is the progress of human society. This is a progress in human life. So when we have to articulate how much progress I have made in the past 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, I have to look into the transformation. It's not that I was living in a rented house and now I have a house of my own. I was going by public transport and now I am having my own car. Okay, I was using local garments and now I am using branded clothes. This is not my transformation. This may or may not be an aid to transformation. My basic transformation is here. How much related I feel to the human beings now. How much harmony I am there in and how much I am able to enable harmony around me. To what extent I am able to coexist with human being and the rest of nature. That is my transformation. That is something to be evaluated. And we can see this as a mark of our transformation also. So the way you looked at the people in your college, in your institution, in your surrounding earlier and now the way you look at them, that might have changed a lot. Earlier when you moved into the campus, so you looked everyone as your competitor. And uh, we start by looking at a person, we started looking into the salary that the other person is getting, the post that the other person has, the looks of the body, okay, the garments and the accessories used by the person, the number of publications made by the person, and so many things. Our attention was caught into all these things. Now we are able to see the other person as a relative. This is a huge change that we can see. So this kind of transformation is desirable and this is quite achievable, isn't it? In fact, going by this, if you see, if one person is able to understand in 10 years and in the next 10 years, he is able to help 10 more people to understand. Then going by this, in 100 years, we are going to have 100 crore people who are into this process of transformation. May not be accomplished, but they all can enter together into this process of transformation. And we're just articulating that if the number has to go up by 10 times in 10 years, then if you calculate the 10th root of 10, it comes to 1.2589 something. So 26% increment has to take place <laughs> every year. So, and, and that is quite achievable, isn't it? So just that we have to make the right program for education. And this is quite doable. This is quite achievable. We all can enter into the process of transformation together. This is quite possible. The whole humanity can be there as a part of this program. And the focus is on right understanding. It's not on a person being acclaimed as the person with right understanding or some tradition or some ritual. No, not like that. Essentially, the right understanding has to be at the core. The transformation has to be at the core. Our conduct has to be at the core. The question is, uh, who organizes the self, human self? And is the, is the powers and activities are organized the self? See, if you look at the slide, you are saying that every unit is self-organized. So there is no organizer. Right, this is right. Uh, but human consciousness, every unit is self-organized. Hmm. 
and every unit is participating in organization of the larger order mm. so there is no organizer of the self and that's how we are the seer doer and experiencer if somebody is organizing me then i am not the doer if somebody will make me know then i am not the seer if somebody is going to make me happy and then i am not the experiencer mm. so i am the seer i am doer doer i am the experiencer so i have to be clear about this and that's how it becomes my responsibility to see the reality as it is the other person can only be a help ठीक है दीदी बट द हाउ द सेल्फ इज वर्क ना हाउ द सेल्फ इज वर्क द सेल्फ यू आर द सेल्फ how are you working how did you decide this question how did you select these words try to make it out how do you feel happy or unhappy how do you become sometimes comfortable sometimes uncomfortable try to look into within yourself so you are using this word self as an indicator essentially we are talking about us i am talking about myself you are talking about yourself mm. you have to talk about yourself look within and then you have the answer okay sir thank you sir okay didi nice so we have to work for this transformation and if you look at the whole existence it is already in coexistence one important take away from this whole discussion is that i do not have to organize the existence it's only that i have to see the coexistence i do not have to you know make that order that order is already naturally acceptable to each one of us we only have to align with that we only have to align with our natural acceptance we only have to align with our acceptance for relationship harmony and coexistence and we are not able to awaken to contemplation understanding or realization and that is the core issue the moment i am able to awaken to these activities i become i come to a state of harmony i am in harmony and i am in a state of continuity of happiness which is my basic aspiration nice namaste uh, bhaiya uh, when we talk about this transformation and as you said it is achievable and doable because everything is already there and it is self organized we have to just see but uh, bhaiya there are at times you know uh, like there is uh, of course i may understand this but at the same time there's a lot of influence of uh, the environment as you see very recently uh, the uh, there was a builder in pune it was there in the news and his son he uh, murdered two uh, people like uh, by rash driving and but then uh, he was asked to write an essay uh, of uh, some 300 words and uh, and there was no penalty and uh, i think few more things are very trivial things and he was asked to let go so when such things happen in the environment so how difficult it is to accept and then work out uh, because uh, now they say that he was a, a young boy so he was below 18 and so he should be uh, let go and there are many such instances when we talk about uh, the workplaces also the uh, the people are more engaged into divide and rule policy because they feel that that would uh, you know enhance whatever it could be so when they do it so uh, even if people are not in competition they fall into this competition so 
sometimes way I feel that transformation, as you very rightly said, is true. And as you said, that's a uh, 26% of, uh, you know, work uh, we have to do towards transforming so many uh, people. That's true. But uh, nevertheless, this is also something that which is very much ongoing. So, uh, yes, yeah, how, say that? you know, have this kind of, uh, I don't know how to put it into words, but it is really disturbing. Yes, so this is certainly not something, you know, which can be welcomed by the society. So this is something completely wrong and uh, we have to work for the solution for this. But we'll see a few things here. Like these things have been happening in the tradition. These things have been happening for a long time. The core issue is that people are trying to look for happiness from sensation from the body or by getting some favorable feeling from others. And this incident is just an indicator of the limit to which people have gone and are looking for sensation from outside. So it's not something alarming as such because this has been happening. It's only that the news has come, but this has been happening. I can see that here in NCR also, the people who have got a lot of money from the sale of lands and their children are just uh, spending the money just like that. They are having luxurious cars and they will be driving so fast on the roads. Many times that incident is not taking place, sometimes it is taking place. So we can say the basic problem is that people are trying to be happy from things outside, from physical facilities, sensation, or by getting some attention from others. And they are not able to see the happiness inside. They are not able to see that it is their innate nature. It's not something to be fetched from outside. So proactively, we are working for that. So we will not be moved by these incidents. We are only able to see that, okay, now this has become more important, more urgent. And we will work for it more sincerely. But it's not that we will get affected by this. Yes, we are able to see now that in education, this has to be placed at the core. How come a juvenile child behave like this? That he killed two people and he is not feeling anything bad about it. So the education is responsible for it. That's how we are saying that the role of education is to enable this kind of transformation. The education is failing to transform our children. You can see that now many educational institutes have become a kind of places of luxury. Children go there to study, basically to enjoy the luxuries there, not to develop right understanding, right feeling. So you have to work sincerely for education. G. That's nice true, Bhaiya. <laughs> yeah, one last uh, opinion. That is, Bhaiya, it's not only about education, but there has to be training to the parents as well. Because giving a, a, a very luxurious car as Porsche to a child who is not even 17, driving at 3 a.m. to and coming out from a, a you know pub and uh, totally he is drunk and still the father is also not guilty. So uh, does education only has to play a role or it is a kind of a, uh, you know, uh, we have to develop this towards family also. The family orientation is also important. Yes, that's how we keep on saying this you know, in our workshops also, that we are working in higher education because the uh, higher education is preparing the parents of tomorrow, teachers of tomorrow, policy makers of tomorrow. You can just see the people also sitting on the, you know, as a judge, they are also not able to take this incident so seriously. So the policy makers are also at stake here. They yeah, also absolutely. have to look into their responsibility. Yes. Absolutely. Jeeva, yeah, thank you so much, Bhaiya. <laughs> nice, Didi. <laughs>